there's a new trailer for Inside Out 2. The new emotions have been revealed. Anxiety will be the villain and all of the previous emotions will be suppressed. ¡Ah! Ya llegamos. Y esto es Al Freli. Frelis, what's up? So, guess what? Turns out that Pixar just decided to shadow drop the new trailer for its upcoming film, Inside Out 2. And so, we decided to bring you a video analyzing what was shown and what we could expect from the movie so far. The trailer starts off with our dear Riley. She's not the sweet little girl we once knew, no. Riley is now 13 years old, entering the wonderful world of teenage years. This isn't happening! This isn't happening! This isn't happening! <laughs> Now she has anxiety, pimples and braces, the whole starter pack of body image insecurity. It seems like the film will begin with a hockey game scene to establish what has happened since the last movie. Here we see Joy, who still is the leader of the emotions. But hold on, she has now matured due to the events of the previous film. Joy now understands that life can't be pure happiness all of the time. Feeling sadness, anger, fear and disgust is completely healthy and necessary. And that's precisely what we witness in this scene, as Joy happily allows sadness to handle the main console. We are also reintroduced to the other emotions. Anger makes a boxing-style entrance and is ready to knock out the opposing team. Fear naturally steps in to put on a mouth guard, and disgust realizes it was someone else's mouth guard. That hockey game definitely was an emotional roller coaster for Riley. She literally experienced all her emotions here. We get a brief look at Riley's room, and it's filled with hockey stuff, like this poster in the background or even a lamp made from hockey sticks. But my favorite item by far is this four town poster from Turning Red. Please, I beg you, Disney, release more four town songs. I need them. In this same scene, Riley lies down to sleep, and I believe that this is precisely when the remodeling scene from the previous teaser will take place. Let's remember that the workers came to remodel the console while the emotions were asleep. By the next day, all their mess is still there. We see loose stones and tools scattered everywhere. They didn't even bother to clean up. And just then, anxiety shows up. She completely broke the internet when she was first revealed a couple months ago. Joy, once again, struggles to deal with this new emotion. Anxiety is worried because she wanted them all to make a good first impression, and disgust is shocked to learn that there are even more new emotions. And ugh, here, right here, we are introduced to the new emotions, envy, ennui, and embarrassment. And let's just say that they are exactly as we imagined them. We are so happy to be able to see them for the very first time. Their designs are amazing. Wow. Envy is the smallest of them all. When you feel that emotion, you feel inferior when comparing yourself to others. Additionally, she has big envious eyes. Next up is Anui, and she is basically boredom. She embodies that teenage attitude of not caring about anything, always glued to her phone and nothing catches her attention. Lastly, there is embarrassment. This is the biggest emotion of them all. I love the irony of his design, because when you feel ashamed, you are very self-aware. You feel like you take up a lot of space, but in reality, you just want to shrink and disappear. It is very funny to see him try to hide despite his size. I also appreciate the choice of him wearing a hoodie, as he uses it to hide out of shame. But the best part is when Joy tries to greet embarrassment, and they end up having a super awkward moment. One of those cringe moments that gives you chills down your spine. Oh, we're doing a fit? No. Oh, no, going high. Oh, Ooh. oh man. <laughs> An awkward handshake is a classic cringe moment. I didn't expect it, but embarrassment turned out to be cringe the emotion. And on top of that, he had sweaty palms. <laughs> Afterwards, Riley will be attending a hockey summer camp. We see a sign that reads Ice Arena and many students around Riley's age in the background. I didn't realize hockey was so popular in San Francisco. Then, Riley spots a girl with a red streak in her hair. Her name has been confirmed to be Valentina Ortiz, and she's described as a high school hockey player who everyone, including Riley and her friends, looks up to. Envy is amazed when Val invites Riley to sit with her and her friends because she's the cool girl, but Anxiety says they can show their excitement. And Joy, once again, just like in the previous movie, makes the mistake of not letting Anxiety do her job. This results in Joy causing a super cringy moment for Riley. 
Naturally, embarrassment takes over the console and anxiety says, <laughs> that's definitely not going to haunt us for the rest of our lives. Poor Riley. I'm sure all of us have been in this kind of situation before. But anyway, it looks like Val is immune to Riley's cringe. Either that or she is very understanding of Riley, as later on both of them continue to hang out and Val even invites Riley to be part of her team. And here's where the conflict between the emotions begins. Anxiety explains that her job is to plan for the future and she wants to prevent Riley from having embarrassing moments with her new friends. However, to achieve this, she starts becoming a control freak. Anxiety starts giving a speech about how Riley needs new friends or otherwise she will be completely alone in high school, out with the old, in with the new. She also applies this logic with Riley's emotion, stating that she's going to need more sophisticated emotions than all the previous ones. And so, embarrassment grabs all of the old emotions and bubbles them up. Oh, what a plot twist. Okay, okay, okay. There's a lot to unpack here. First things first, the new emotions will serve as the antagonists. Okay? And they will be led by anxiety. This approach is quite interesting because it's true that anxiety has its usefulness. It helps us think about the future and protect ourselves from what could go wrong. But it's definitely not healthy for your whole life to be governed by this emotion. So apparently, the one who will undergo character development will not be joy, but anxiety. That's a really good twist. And what's even more interesting is that anxiety, in its desire to protect Riley, has suppressed the other emotions, which obviously isn't healthy. Not even joy there to go that far. So anxiety is the one who will have to learn to coexist with the other emotions. And speaking of the old emotions, oh man, they literally shoved them into a bottle. This is obviously a reference to the frazzled verb bottle up, which means to keep a feeling or emotion inside instead of expressing it. And well, that is literally what happens. Meanwhile, Anxiety takes full control of the console and starts unleashing chaos in poor Riley's life. Here we see Riley with some friends, and while we don't really know the context, it's clear that she kinda abandons them in order to hang out with Val, and naturally, her friends feel betrayed. We also see how Anxiety is starting to create her own anxious memories, but she not only takes control of the main console, no, 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 she also takes control of all of Riley's mind. She has an entire team of animators who who are producing all the possible bad scenarios that Anxiety comes up with. I think that the way it works is that Anxiety tells the animators different scenarios and they start creating them so Riley can witness them in her mind. This is somewhat similar to the dreams in the first film, where there were actors recording the dreams. But man, here it's clear that Anxiety has these poor animators completely exploited. On the screens we can see many of these fears, like getting hit by a truck in the middle of a hockey match, breaking her hockey stick, getting a pimple, falling during a game, losing a thief, getting her thumb glued to the ice ring, having food between her brackets, and there's even the meme of her crush falling for the cool girl. <laughs> and because of this fear, it seems like Riley and Jordan did end up becoming a couple. Clearly, this is taking a toll on her personal life. Riley wakes up late, hasn't bothered to get ready for school, and her self-esteem is rock bottom as she tells herself she's the worst. Here we see her mom's mind again, and I'm surprised she has her regular console with the five classic emotions. I thought they would allude to why Riley has more complex emotions while her parents still have the basic ones, but so far, there hasn't been an explanation in the trailer. Wouldn't it be hilarious if, as a joke at the end, it's revealed that the other emotions of her parents are repressed, and that's why they haven't shown up? But continuing with the trailer, all the emotions manage to escape and are back in the hallways of long-term memories. And it's nice to see that now anger, disgust and fear will be on a journey through Riley's mind. But there is something strange here. Where is sadness? It's unclear how, but sadness separated from the group. We aren't exactly sure what's happening in this part of the trailer, but the raid forms and the ground starts to break apart. Although it looks like it's part of Riley's mind renovations, as this fissure ends up with a pretty nice finish and even has a name. It is called Sarcasm. <gasps> Yeah, we know it's a pun, but we really like the joke. Basically, the echo of any sound that crosses over will sound sarcastic. Another interesting detail is that the emotions are navigating down a river. However, they manage to get off before it takes them directly to the abyss. Now, first of all, I think I spotted an animation error, because here we can see the river, but from the worker's perspective, it disappears. But who knows, perhaps it will be justified in the movie. 
On the flip side, I doubt that the bottom of the abyss is the memory dump we saw in the first film. I believe it leads somewhere else instead, and I think this is the case because of the river. This river seems significant because in another part of the trailer, we see it flowing into a very strange and mysterious area. Here we can see several of Riley's memories floating. Honestly, I have no idea how they got there. Here, Joy and Sadness look quite happy, admiring the beauty of this place. According to a press release, this is Riley's belief system. Riley's sense of self is made up of all her beliefs. Each one can be heard by just the plug of one of these strings. Here, Joy and Sadness will send key memories to this formative land. I think that with these memories, they will help Riley regain her confidence in herself. After all, the way to deal with anxiety is with confidence. To sum it up, it seems that now Anxiety will be the one to have character development instead of Joy, and I find this to be an excellent idea. On one hand, it doesn't repeat the same story structure as the previous movie, but at the same time, the lessons that Anxiety will acquire from this adventure will be the same lessons that the audience can use to control their own anxiety. I'm already eager for this movie to come out because once I watch it, I won't be mentally ill anymore.